वेलकम टू ऑल टू सी शेड इसी दिन से रुकेगा जब जब इस तरह की बातें करते हैं आप भी लोग बिकॉज़ बाय गॉड फॉर गाइडिंग मी सो के टू सी टुडे टू थैंक्स फॉर द लव फॉर द लव ऑफ द शेड इन दिस इवेंट बाय ऑल टू सी दिस इवनिंग वी विल बी share the kids of your item with a particular looking for the business this this love for all right by me group for everything to follow in the process of the day with building stuff all right by me okay thank you Change our hearts as we stand on Your.
Good evening, everyone. It's good to have you again with us this evening as we continue our evening prayer today. And we commence our worship on page 61. So we want you to just let go and let God and allow God's Holy Spirit to take control of everything in this worship this evening. So we look at ascension. Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Hallelujah. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and it shall be forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen, and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ once raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins, and in silence let us bring those things before God now. Together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. For the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
remember another contributor to our Christian faith, and he is John Calvin. John Calvin was the leader of the reform wing of the Protestant Reformation. And he was born in Northeastern France and nurtured in a devout Roman Catholic family. In his education, he earned a master's degree at the age of 19 years in humanistic studies in 1528. His father wanted him to study law but he, of course, wanted to have his own way, and, and therefore he studied theology. His passions were the area of theology, languages, rhetoric, and literary sciences. In 1534, he experienced a major conversion to Roman Catholicism, and really to the evangelical cause of the reform Protestant faith for the rest of his life. His writings were very dear to him and he actually had a, a special piece, very outstanding work he did with the Institutes of the Christian Religion, which was published in 1536 and updated again in 1539. But his focus was really on systematic theology. And, and there is where these writings are now being used by students who study theology. He's also, um, he also looked at other reformers who supported him. And if you can recall, last Tuesday we had St. Augustine. Sister St. Augustine was one of those persons who, under whom he studied. And he, he, of course, looked at certain themes. His focus, based on his theological writings, looked at the sovereignty of God, election and predestination, the true nature of the Christian life, and the proper understanding of the authority of scripture. In our faith in the Anglican Church, his contributions were in the area of the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, prayer, basically the Lord's Prayer, and the two sacraments, which is baptism and Holy Eucharist. And of course, he assisted with the Romans' view on the Lord's Supper. But there is an acronym that is being used that is fashioned to his work called TULIP. And the T stands for total depravity, which is inherited guilt from Adam, because he felt that man inherited the guilt of sin from Adam. U is unconditional election apart from human merit. It means that they already had that knowledge and it was unconditional. They had no other way but to really look at that divine foreknowledge of God. It had limited atonement, L, I, the irresistible grace, and peace of perseverance. The, this, of course, was so powerful in his life that it was really the work of the Holy Spirit. So that in other areas, other interests he had was to control the public state by imposing very moral disciplines. This was one of his area of focus. He believed in moral discipline. And of course, he was able to gain insight into the University of Geneva. He was able to develop an education three-level system in education at the University in Geneva. Because of his godly principles in public life, he looked at other aspects out in society, such as creation of hospitals, care for the poor, orphans, widows, and the infirm. And of course, he lobbied for provisions for better sanitation and creation of new industries to, the em to employ the people. 
So he was an all-rounder. He looked at all the total society to make his contribution. And therefore, he was able to influence the growth and, of democracy and believed that the state and the church must unite and work together for the good of all concerned. Psalm 105, this is 23 to 45. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than his enemies. Whose heart he turned, so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They worked his signs among them and the portents in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and it grew dark, but the Egyptians rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land was overrun by frogs in the very chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of insects and gnats within all their borders. He gave them hailstones instead of rain and flames of fire throughout their land. He blasted their vines and their fig trees and shattered every tree in their country. He spoke and the locusts came and young locusts without number, which ate up all the garden, all the green plants in their land and devoured the fruit of their soil. He struck down the firstborn of their land, the first fruits of all their strength. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes, there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. The ox and quails appeared and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and water flowed. So the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy wood and Abram his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nation, and they took the fruits of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Zach Zachariah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. The angel who talked with me came again and wakened me as one is wakened from sleep. He said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a lampstand all of gold with a bowl on the top of it. There are seven lamps on it with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on the top of it. And by it, there are two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. 
I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered me, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my Lord. He said to me, This is the word of Lord to Zerub Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring on the top of uh, on the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right and left of the lampstand? And the second time I said to him, What are these two branches of the olive trees which pour out the oil through the, golden, the two golden pipes? He said to me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me this. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scatter the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to all forebears, to Abraham, and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their face, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to see? 
Your sins are forgiven. Or to say, stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good evening, everyone. It is indeed an honor for me to speak to you this evening on God's word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your power in our lives, the power of the Holy Spirit. Dear God, send afresh your holy presence among us even now to reveal your truths to us so that we will follow your will and not go our own ways. Dear God, we thank you for another opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray in thanksgiving. Amen. So this evening as we worship in our pursuits for worship, I've chosen the theme, Power of the Promised Messiah who is the Son of God, power of the promised Messiah. And as we continue the theme of making disciples, which started last week, making disciples today, which is our diocesan theme, we know that our vision is revealing Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that, that vision because it allows us to know that we can do nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the gospel reading is demonstrating Jesus' authority as he shares with his disciples, because they were under his wings, observing, making observation, because the time would have come when he had to leave them and go on his own. So that as we look at the scripture reading on Matthew 9 verse 6, it says, But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed and go to your home. Stand up. Take your bed and go to your home. The word of God is calling on all of us to stand up. To stand up. And, and Jesus was actually demonstrating that power and authority that he had. Because he had just stilled the storm. He had just 
send demons out into the sea through by via pigs. Yeah. And now he's demonstrating that he had the power to forgive sins and through forgiveness, healing can then come about. And the key words in this text is really faith, number one, followed by forgiveness and healing. Faith, forgiveness, and healing. And the story revealed both Matthew and Mark. If you were to look at Matthew 9 and Mark chapter 2, you will see that the, the revelation of what was seen or observed was somewhat different, but the main focus was those three key words that I just mentioned. Of course, when we are in a situation, any time that we might be looking at the same object, but each one of us will see it differently. And that is just what happened. So that Matthew was straight to the point. He didn't waste any time. He just said that these men were coming in with this man on a mat, on a bed, sorry. And there is Mark is going through all around. He's saying, oh, you know that the, there were so many persons there. You know, we couldn't get in. We couldn't get in because we couldn't get to the door. So what we did, remove a part of the rope over Jesus' head and allow him to enter. Matthew didn't mention anything like that. So that it gives us a, a glimpse of perception and how we view things in the world. But most importantly, it illustrates the disciples of Christ is saying that it's Jesus is telling them that they need to be persistent. And that is what Mark was trying to demonstrate because he was saying, you know, yes, I have to take this man. Yes, as his friend, we have to take him. But Matthew is saying, oh yes, the, the man is there and Jesus saw him. And therefore, Jesus recognized his heart recognize what he wanted and therefore what Jesus said to him he said to him take courage take courage when he saw him because Jesus knew his faith Jesus understood the inner part of this man he said take heart son your sins are forgiven because Jesus was looking beyond the physical healing and he was looking at the inner man to heal the spiritual part of the paralytic man. And of course, as we see, this is really modeling Jesus' sacrificial trust. Keep it watching. Yes, we are. Look right here. Engaging, engaging his disciples to follow him. And sometimes that sacrificial trust to know Jesus, you may want to use the word push. And most persons know it as pray until something happens. But you know, I realize that that push doesn't mean only pray, you know. It means you have to, with the prayer, you have to persevere. You have to be persistent and you need to ponder. So you pray, you persevere, yes. You have to be persistent with the prayer and you have to ponder. Therefore, you need to meditate. And that was the model that Jesus was demonstrating to his disciples. And this, of course, most importantly, was faith. Faith was central to the conviction of the paralytic man wanting to be healed by Jesus. But Jesus saw the faith of the man. And that faith came with the power of the Holy Spirit. At this second, at this moment, when we are experiencing the week before the coming of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, we are recognizing now that Jesus ascended and he has left his disciples knowing that the Holy Spirit as the comforter, the advocate will be coming soon. So the gift of the Holy Spirit 
according to one author, Hagen. He said the gift of the Holy Spirit is to the believer so that he might receive miracles. So Jesus recognizing his faith and said, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. It was to demonstrate that Jesus was a compassionate God. He's a loving God. It doesn't matter who we are, what we have done. Jesus is willing to forgive. And C.S. Lewis, in his book of Case of Christian Faith, he said, faith includes more than belief. Faith includes more than belief. It also includes commitment, which needs to naturally act, um, action, to natural action. So it means once we have the faith, it means come that Holy Spirit within us that is driving the faith will allow us to go into action. So that if someone wronged us, we'll be willing to go into action because of faith to go to the person and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Yes? So that response of faith is what we learn in our core, what we know in our core values in the diocese plan, strategic plan, as reconciliation. Reconciliation. And that faith, that response to faith for forgiven sins is a saving faith. A saving faith of our salvation. Because we also have the general faith which we can find in Romans 12, verse 3. And that faith also gives us the fruit, that fruit of the Spirit that we experience in Galatians 5, 22. It's based on our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that gift of faith has a supernatural power, that same power that Jesus has. So we have the gift of faith that is an action thing. The gift of faith that we can see. So we saw that the paralytic man was here and he got up and he walked. But the other aspect of that faith is silence. We don't see it. It is inward. It is inside of us. It's working inside of us. And it is a passive kind of action. There is no works. You receive it. So he received the power of Jesus Christ. When Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. So even though that those are wrong, were angry, yeah? And they were saying, ah, oh yes, he's a blasphemer. He's playing God. Yeah, no, 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 no. God knew what he was, Jesus knew what he was doing. And the psalmist says in Psalm 103 verse 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, the benefits of God's goodness. Who forgives what? All your iniquity and who heals all your diseases. So when he forgives, healing takes place. So if we don't forgive, we remain sick, we remain sad, we remain upset, we remain angry. So therefore, it is important today as we approach our Pentecost that we will drop all those things and come to know Jesus Christ. Because the gift of faith heals all diseases. God knows our hearts. He knows our inmost being. For us to receive that healing. Because he sees our hearts. So the promised Messiah understands the sinner. The son of God. And when we sing that song, you know we have in our book. 850. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Lord, and know my thoughts, I pray. So God knows our Jesus. God in his son, Jesus Christ, knows our thoughts. See if there be some wicked man in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. So when I was doing this sermon, I said, God, I'm a wretched sinner. I had to check myself. There it is, he said, cleanse me from every sin and set me free. So when God cleanses us from every sin, we are free indeed. We are indeed free. And you recognize what happened. 
They say the old people say friends will take you, but they don't bring you back. But these friends were happy. In Mark, it stated where they removed the roof over Jesus' head and allowed the paralytic man to go in. And therefore, he said, take courage, don't worry. And the same thing your friends will say to you sometimes. Don't worry. You can do all things. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Don't worry. I'm saying to all of us today, do not worry. When Daniel was in the lion den, what happened? God shut the lion mouth. Shut it so what the, the lions couldn't do anything to him. Because as children of God, he protects us. And that anointing comes upon us, came upon Jesus at his baptism in the River Jordan. And that same anointing comes upon us at our baptism and ends at our confirmation where baptism ends. And that supernatural faith that Ezekiel, remember that he received in the time of famine, where he was able to get food. However, Isaiah 53, 5 really summarizes everything for us, that action of faith in action, that supernatural power, that innate part of us that lies from within us. And Isaiah 53, 5 says it clearly, he was wounded for our transgression, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us what? Whole. The punishment. He went upon the cross, outstretched his arms, nailed his feet for us. So we can be made whole. All we have to be surrender. And by his bruises, we are healed. So COVID-19, we can be healed. The financial bleed in our organizations, whether it be church organization, other organization, our own personal funds bleeding because of those who lost jobs and they had no other form of income. So there is that financial bleed. But God in his son, Jesus Christ, with his power, can provide for us. He can provide a meal on the table before you know it. Trust him. Believe in him. Because he has that supernatural power and authority to forgive and to heal by our faith in him. So Jesus said, take up your bed, stand up, take a bed, and go to your home. And that home for all of us is salvation. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready for the bridegroom? Yes. Are we ready? The bridegroom is there waiting for us. Jesus. Let us just surrender completely yes. today. Let us give up all those animosities, all those indifferences, and come to know Jesus. We did not read um, the this, this second reading from Ephesians, but I want us to really look at Ephesians chapter 4 to look at a new life. And it says, let no, um, from verse 29, chapter 4, it says, let no evil to come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear, and do not grieve what the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Put it away from all your bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice and be kind and be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another let us forgive one another as god christ has forgiven us and you know we say it we're going to say it just knowing our lord's prayer we're going to see so my friends 
as we prepare for that holy time, Pentecost. That is revealed to us in Acts chapter 1, verse 2. And as you go back home for the rest of this week until Sunday, read chapter 2 to understand this Pentecostal aspect of our life. The church is, yeah, you know, we as the, the Pentecost is one of those periods, the, a major feast in our church's year, Pentecost. And there it is important for us to pay particular attention to Pentecost. So after ascension, after that 40 days from, from when Jesus rose from the resurrection, we had 40 days ascension. So within these 10 days, we are preparing for that Pentecost. These 10 days for the coming of the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit can, is working inwardly in us and outwardly is visible. And as we await that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, let us get up and walk and be led by the Holy Spirit. So our walk must be led by the Holy Spirit because that offer for us is salvation. No one is left behind. So God will pour his Holy Spirit on all of us, just and unjust, righteous and unrighteous, wicked, good and bad, evil, whatever. It's available for all of us. And we have this opportunity at this time, this moment, to do that. Let us walk together in love as a community of faith. Let us hold each other's hand not because of COVID, but imagine we holding each other's hand, united together in St. Andrew Parish, working together in harmony to fulfill God's will. Listen to his word. And Pentecost is that moment when that renewal of our minds, that power and authority that will come to us, that we can now refresh our minds with that hope and that growth that we will experience. So that in our faith in the Anglican Church, the color for Pentecost is red. This weekend would have been the renewal weekend, yeah? I hope that some of you might have already, some of the messages that have already been sent around. But the color is red. And that red is that, that tells us about that fire Pentecost. Looking at the blood of the martyrs, red. That is my favorite color, you know, I love red. Red tells you, it brings a life, it's energy, and you see energy. And I believe that's why our colors are red, white, and black. Red tells the energy of the people, the energy that is within us, that hope, that growth for renewal. Let us start living in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the symbols for Pentecost is the wind. It, re re um, it refers to the breath of life. Ruah in the Old Testament, when that spirit moved over the waters at creation, what happened? Ruah. And now in the New Testament, that power, that new power, that new covenant, is pneuma. And then when you hear, you hear pneumonia. You see where the word comes from? Pneuma telling us it's the breath of life. If you remove the breath, you're what? A dead person. If you remove that breath, there is no life. Yes? So let's just remember that symbol of wind, the power. When the, when the Pentecost in the upper room, that wind came. And what the, what the fire was on the tongues of the people that was flowing down. That represented God's Holy Spirit that he promised when he was, Jesus was leaving, when he ascended. He promised to send the comforter, the advocate, yes. So that symbol and that fire tells us the great power of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
it fell on them that they spoke in different languages. That element is necessary for our daily living. Yes, that element. And those elements are what? Sun and light. Without the sun, if you don't have a dryer, the sun will dry your clothes and it's good to have the sun out in the, the, the clothing when you wash them out in the sunlight because it helps to remove some of the bacteria and so on from the clothing, especially now with, with COVID. Yeah? And the light, the light represents the light of Christ that will illumine our darkness, remove all the darkness from us. So therefore, the symbols are the, that fire which we represent in the sun and the light. So therefore, these are the necessities of our lives today. Let us come to Jesus now. Let us not let us be refreshed and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us spend the next few days until Sunday with our inner cells in our rooms that now that we have to stay home, go back into our inner chambers. Let us reflect into our inner cells so that we could make that turn around and change. Change for the better good of all. To love one another. Can we not do that? Can we not reflect on that as God said in his commands to love him and love others? Let us love one another. St. Andrew people, St. Andrew Posse and others out there, let us love one another because God loves us. So let us all stand up and take our bed and go home. In that home, we will find solace. In that home, we will find refreshment. In that home, we will find peace. In that home, we will find God's righteousness. So let us Therefore, forgive, respond to the power of the Holy Spirit, and we all will or shall be healed. And as we reflect on that, and as we welcome the power of the Holy Spirit, and as we hear this song at this time, come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us listen. And as we listen, let us remain quiet and be still. And know that God is present. Know that he is here to heal us. He has come to heal his sheep. He has come to heal the lambs. Come, my people. Come, my people, now and be healed by the word of the Lord. Through the power of his Holy Spirit. Come my people and be healed. So let us hear that refreshing song. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come. Holy Spirit, I need you. Come sweet Spirit, I
show the form of faith in the Apostles' Creed on page 42. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and the servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Apollic for the seventh Sunday of Easter. O oh God, the King of Glory, you have exalted your only Son Jesus Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exhort us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Go back to page 71, the colleagues on page 71. Grant, Lord, that we may be Faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without going weary, serve you without failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. At this time, dear God, we bring our diocese before you that you will really at this time reach out to our diocese in a special way today. Help of God that you will look to the bishop to strengthen him during this time and all other members of clergy working together as a team to harmonize the understandings of this time, at this time. Dear God, we want to bring our 
people, especially our shut-ins at this time, we want to reach out to those persons who are less fortunate than we are. Father, we ask that they can be easily identified, Lord, wherever they are and cannot be reached, Lord. We know that you are the one who will seek them out for us. You will send someone out there so that we can be of some help even at this time, so that they can be supported in some way because we know, Lord, there are so many persons out there whom we have not yet reached and some who are really having more than they ought to have and not willing to share. But help us as people, you will convict our hearts to share with others, dear God. And so, Father God, at this time, we really thank you for the opportunity to serve you at this time in this medium. We ask that you bless the medium. You bless all those who are beside, behind the scenes, working at it, trying to fashion it and to make it excellent for you. Lord, because we know that you are God of excellence. So Lord, continue to strengthen those who are behind this, Lord. Touch them from today, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Father God, reach out to them in a way that will help them to go on from day to day, despite the challenges we face, Lord. Father, we want to really reach out to those persons to our nation that has not really increased the numbers for COVID infected persons. So as our Prime Minister comes out on Saturday at 2 p.m., let's hope we will have some favorable account so that we can go out again and be mindful of our situation in this present world. Because this is a new way of us really reaching out to each other. So grant us, O oh Lord, new expressions, fresh expressions, that we can reach out to one another as we continue this journey in the vineyard. And go and spread the God. To unite hearts today, O oh God, in our, all our communities, not only in the parish of St. Andrew, but all the other parish throughout this diocese and in other nations of the world, O oh God. We thank you and you praise you, O oh God, for the work you are doing in us as we await in that renewal of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now have the intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayers. Number five. Prayer for protection. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. That under your protection, now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mm. Number 28. Prayer for young people. God, our Father, we pray for in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world. And that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a, but as a, give them strength, and to keep alive their joy in your creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Number three, self-education. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you 
minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you. And then use us, we pray you, as you will. Of your people, through our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Number 33, in time of disaster, God of goodness and love, in whom we can trust in every hour of need, have mercy on all who are faced with fear and distress through hurricane, earthquake, tempest, pestilence, flood, and as we go through this pandemic of COVID-19. We ask that help me may be given to them speedily and that, it, then that this emergency may be turned into an opportunity to strengthen the bonds of love and service which bind men and nations together through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A pleasant evening to everyone. Good to have you here in the parish of St. Andrew as we continue our online service this day, the 20th of May, 2020. We also want to say a special welcome to those persons visiting outside the parish. I'm sure we have quite a few persons and I know I've been speaking to persons from other parts of the world and I'm so happy to know that you are here with us in this parish at this point in time. We want to also say thank you and a happy birthday to those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries this week. Happy birthday to you. I know I said this on Tuesday, but nothing is wrong in having a double celebration or triple celebration for your birthday or anniversary. So continue to be blessed at this point in time. We continue to ask persons to support one another. Remember, you can support financially. You can support by positive words, by visiting persons or even calling them. Keep in mind, keep in touch with your family, with your parish family, because a little can go a long way. And for those persons who would like to make um, contributions, do not hesitate to contact Father Lynch and his number is on the screen or Reverend Sandy Robinson so that you, they can spread the positive and good vibes that you are sharing with us in this parish. We also want to remind you of a renewal on Saturday the 30th of May 2020. This takes place at the Holy Spirit Anglican Church in Penal starting at 1.30 p.m. The event, the event takes place on the Facebook page, um, the Anglican Church, tt.com, Renewal 2020. Be sure to look out for that and celebrate with, the par with, with that parish, that's the parish of St. Christopher, I think it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone, but I think it's St. Christopher. All right, the, the celebrant will be Reverend Father Aaron Charles and the worship leader, Deacon Shaquille Charles. For persons who would also like to make financial contributions, we do have something set up for our parish at this point in time, and persons who would like to do so, the account number is on the screen. You're welcome to feel free and make your contributions to whatever bank that you will, and all proceeds will go in the work of the parish of St. Andrew, and also to help other persons who might be in need at this point in time. Our next service takes place on Sunday, Sorry, my mistake. Oh gosh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about Sunday. My, my, my apologies. The next service takes place on Tuesday, the 2nd of June at 8.15 a.m. All our services at this point in time will be at Zoom and we hope one day very, very soon we can meet again in our churches. Be sure to visit our Facebook page, Andrew Parish, for more information, as well as the St. Andrew Parish Hoover YouTube account for all recorded services. For those persons who would also like to get information pertaining to the renewal, there will be DVDs on sale as well. I forgot to mention that. There are DVDs on sale and more information will be given to you at a later time about how you can get that information um, as you go on. So we look forward to seeing everyone at the next service. Rest assured that this service that um, we have today is recorded and it will be up and running very soon. 
Take care and have a great day, everyone. Before, and also as we leave this service, Lord, as we leave this service, Lord, where we are worshipped and adored, let our thanks again arise for this holy sacrifice. Help us, Lord, this call we too to do the good and speak the truth, to work with all our might and stand up bravely for what is right. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In peace, Amen. love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.